As you can see, it's a lovely day outside and the sun is shining and spring has begun. I want to show you something. These are my solar panels. But how exactly do solar panels work? To make solar panels, we start out with ordinary sand. Sand is melted down and filtered to create a sheet of pure silicon crystal. Silicon crystal is a very good insulator. It means it doesn't conduct electricity very well. This is because silicon has four electrons, and in the crystal structure, all the electrons are connected to other electrons. Since we want to create electricity from sunlight, we need to do something about this. We have to make the silicon more conductive. This is done through a process called doping. Doping means you add small impurities to a material. For every million silicon atoms, we add one other atom into the crystal structure. One material we can add is phosphorus. Phosphorus fits nicely into the silicon crystal structure, although it has five electrons instead of four. These extra electrons have nothing to attach to and they can move freely through the material. The resulting material is a so-called N-type semiconductor, negatively charged silicon with a few extra electrons. We can also create a positive semiconductor by doping with a material containing less electrons than silicon. This is usually done with boron. Boron has just three electrons instead of four. This causes the sheet to have holes in it where an electron wants to be. The resulting material is a so-called p-type positive semiconductor. The holes in the p-type semiconductor are constantly filled with electrons from neighboring atoms. This causes the hole to move over to the neighbor. So just like the free electrons in an n-type semiconductor, these holes can move freely through the material as well. When an n-type and p-type semiconductor are placed on top of each other, you create what's called a p-n junction. p-n junctions are the basis of diodes and transistors and also solar panels. Your computer, for example, has billions of these p-n junctions on the silicon chips inside. Explaining how diodes and transistors work, however, is a whole nother video, which I might cover in the future. If you're interested in that, be sure to subscribe to my channel. The N side of a PN junction has free electrons, and on the other side, the P side, it has a lot of free holes. On the barrier between those two materials, the holes are quickly filled with free electrons from the N side. This causes what is called a depletion zone. In this area, all the holes are filled and there are no loose electrons left. This creates an insulating barrier where electricity can't pass through. The phosphorus atoms in the end part of the depletion zone used to have 5 electrons, but now they only have 4. This atom is now called a positive ion. It still wants to have 5 electrons, but it's missing one. So this positive ion attracts electrons, it has a positive charge. On the other side of the depletion zone, the boron atoms used to have 3 electrons, but they now have 4. This causes them to repel electrons. These negative ions have a negative charge. And believe it or not, our solar cell is now ready. So what happens when we introduce sunlight? Well, sunlight is made up of photons. Tiny particles without mass, just pure energy. And when a photon hits our PN junction, it occasionally crashes into an electron, knocking it loose. This creates a free electron and a new hole. Before this electron can get back into the hole, something interesting happens. The end side of the depletion zone, which is full of phosphorus atoms, is positively charged. It attracts the electron. The P side of the depletion zone, which is full of boron atoms, is negatively charged. This repels the electron. So there's an electric field. This causes the free electrons to fly towards the end side, where it joins up with the other free electrons. The hole, on the other hand, moves toward the P side and is joined with other free holes. This causes a buildup of energy. To use this energy, we can connect a wire between the N side, where the free electrons are, and the P side, where the holes are. The electrons can now reach the holes again. So there's going to be a flow of electrons through our wire, an electric current created by sunlight. And now you know.